And what we could see is that while there are progress in, a in Asia, across Asia region of the implementation of the SDG, it's very slow. Uh, and also uh, what we call as it's more focused actually on low-hanging fruits. Uh, or like um, achievements that could have been done even before, even without the Agenda 2030. But the tough questions, the serious questions of development is not being addressed. And I'm uh, uh, talking about, of course, poverty, unemployment, um, gland grabs, uh, patriarchy, the issue of patriarchy and women's equality in Asia, that still very much exists. We call it among civil society organizations in Asia, the systemic barriers of development. We are not only talking about problems of development, we are talking about barriers that impedes the implementation of the Agenda 2030. And that includes lopsided trade and investments in the region. Uh, militarism is also very high and the rise of authoritarianism and authoritarian regimes in the region. Patriarchy is very much widespread as well. Uh, and the general uh, uh, implementation of the neoliberal framework of development has also uh, impeded such growth because we believe that a new framework of development should be uh, implemented in the region in order to really be responsive to the development needs of the people in the region. We believe that there is a trend of shrinking civil society space from the national level to the regional and the global level. Uh, the, the, civil, the civil society spaces that we have right now are, we have to recognize first and foremost that these have been fought for by civil society, whatever we have right now. Uh, but this spaces are now again being, uh, uh, um, uh, if I may say it, if are being attacked uh, because the civil society organizations themselves are actually being attacked. Only like nine countries in Asia that has open space for civil society engagement and involvement and that is very sad uh, because the Asia-Pacific region has a very vibrant civil society community and very sincere, committed to the causes of, uh, uh, of justice, of human rights, democracy, etc. And as development actors, we really want to get involved in realizing these objectives that is also reflected in the Agenda 2030 and other development uh, goals. We are still very much positive that the Agenda 2030 can, can be pursued. Uh, why do we say that? First of all, we see the involvement of civil society organizations, the increasing involvement of civil society organizations, even if they are getting attacked, even if, they are, if there are no spaces. Uh, secondly, the hope that we have right, uh, there is that we have spaces like this, uh, spaces that, uh, that PFD provides and other platforms may also provide that we hope will be replicated by other uh, intergovernmental organizations, by national governments, and let them see that this can happen and this can help uh, in the implementation of the Agenda 2030. So we're still like four years you know, from the, from, from the start of the implementation of the Agenda 2030 and there's still a long way to go. We know there's just a long way to go. We just have to really be sincere, committed to its implementation and we hope that the civil society organizations will be recognized really as development actors within the Agenda 2030.